as you're browsing the internet, maybe you come across a really cool looking landing page and you think, I wish I could have one of those on my website. In this video, I want to show you that if you are a Thrive Landing Pages user, you probably can have that landing page on your website. And I'll show you an example of how it's done. Hello, I'm Shane Malach from Thrive Themes, and this is an example of a landing page. We can have a look at it right here. That was posted in our support forums as an example of, you know, this is a cool looking landing page. And as you can see, it's a fairly simple landing page, but it is visually quite striking, quite impressive. What I want to do in this video is I want to show you how you can replicate a page like this. And I'm going to go into fairly deep levels of detail when doing this. So let's get started right away. What we want, so first of all, we kind of want to break this down. What are we looking at here? What I'm seeing when I look at this page is I see a large background section with an image. I see a box in that section that contains some text and a button. And then I see another section essentially, which is just like this footer bar with a link inside it. And that is what we're going to recreate. I've created a new page, it's a blank page, I've loaded it in Content Builder and I'm going to go to Choose Landing Page. Here, what I want is the full width blank page. So we're just gonna start from scratch with the full width page. And I'm choosing the full width one because we want to have the background that goes uh, the full width of the screen. So with this, let's get rid of the logo at the top here. We don't need that. We will also get rid of this whole bit at the bottom. I will start with this here. This is already a section, a background section. I'll start with that. We want an image in the background. I went ahead and downloaded the image from that page so that it's exactly the same. And I'll insert it here. So this is going to be our background. I will also go ahead and add a second page section, which is going to be our footer, this here. And here's when I said, you know, I'm going to go into fairly deep levels of detail. One of the things I mean is I'm actually going to right click here and go on inspect. You can do this. This is Firefox I'm using. You can also do this in Chrome and pretty much any other browser. This gives you information about the styles being used on this page. And listen, I'm not a developer. I don't understand most of this stuff, but I know that I can select an element and I can recognize some basics like the color. This here is the color of this bar. So I'm gonna copy that, okay, click on it and copy it so that I can get, get this exact color as well. So we're gonna go here, background color and enter it in this field, bam. So we have the exact same color right here. Okay, that's the first step now. Another thing I will do, let's actually stick with this footer bar for a moment. We've got this text here. So I right click on the text and go inspect. So here I can see the, uh, what I wanna find out, okay, we know that the text is white, most likely it looks like it. What I wanna find out is what, what size is this font and what font is it? So what I can see here is font size 13 and the font itself isn't, font weight 300, font size 13, font itself, I don't know yet, but I can do that. And so let's go 13, it's center aligned, and it says something like income disclaimer. Now we can't actually properly read this yet, but I'm not too worried about that, and I'll show you why in a second. Uh, another thing I wanna do is the margins and padding is too much, so maybe it's like 10 and 10 rather than 20 and 20, maybe even less actually. I'm actually probably gonna get rid of it entirely like this. Okay, now, Another thing we need to do, so let's let's start looking at this box and let's start looking at the text. Um, we have text here. Let's go with the default text. This is our paragraph, right? What I wanna find out, so this is white, is 21 pixels and it is the railway font, okay? White, 21 pixels, railway font. Let's make that happen. I'm gonna drop a paragraph in here. And now instead of changing this individual paragraph, what I'm gonna do is go to landing page settings right here and then landing page fonts. And what I wanna do is first of all, colors. My paragraph text color should be white like this. And that fixes the, the footer link as well right away. So that's why I didn't bother editing that you know, the individual text element. I don't want to go and select every text element because I know that almost all the text in this page is going to be white anyway. So I'll change it here. 
And then we want the railway font. So I don't have this in my custom fonts yet. So what I'm going to do is basically I choose paragraph and then add new custom font. This brings me to the font manager. I go add custom font. And from this drop down, I will search for railway. Here it is railway. Then we have, so we saw 300 uh, font weight, 300 and the thick font weight. Let's have a look here. Inspect is 800. So we'll use that. Okay. So that's the font thickness. There we go. Uh, all the others we can ignore, save all the other settings we don't need. So now I have a new custom font. Now what I need to do here is I need to save my changes and reload this page. And that's just to get the changes because I just added a custom font on a different screen. So then I go to landing page settings again, landing page fonts, and now this will be available. So now I have railway. There we go. Okay. Then the font size, what do we have here? This was 13 or something. I think we already said this font size was 21 like this. All right, then let's also do the same thing. So basically I'm doing some basic style settings here. This here, I want this color. I'm going to say that this is my head, my H1 heading. Okay. I'm going to choose this as my H1 heading. So I'm going to go again, railway and Ooh, the font size was 46, I believe, like this. And in this case, oh, I can actually also go H1. H1 color is this. There we go. So now I have the, the, the reason I did this is because it allows me to build the page now without having to edit too many individual elements. So I did some groundwork here that might not be obvious right away, but what's the next step? I think we should bring this box into play, right? We need a box. And what I'm seeing here is a box with a light gray border and a transparent black background. And um, so I go to content box and I want, I'm going to choose a uh, number style number six here. This is the one that's most editable the way I, way I want it to be here. And then, so what do we have? Let's start with the background. I want the background to be black and transparent. Now I could also be very perfectionistic and find out exactly the transparency level and stuff. I'm not going to do that for this example. I'm just going to eyeball it like this. Okay. And then border is some shade of gray. Again, just going to eyeball that roughly like this. Okay. There's also a small border radius, something like this. Now let's, let's put this in here. I uh, don't need this. So let's go and have a comparison. Uh, got a smartphone one big one. So what I'm going to do is copy this text, paste it in here. And this was also center aligned. Then I'm going to actually use a paragraph. So this is my heading one on the page and I don't want another heading underneath it. I'm just going to go copy paste. Oops. So I'm going to undo this and I'm going to hold control shift paste this time because I don't want it to, it did something weird with the styles. I don't want it to do that. So instead I'm just going to get this and make it the same size as this. If I inspect this bit here, see what size it is. 34. Okay. That's what we want. So I want this to be 34 pixels. Here we go. Also, I just noticed I'm slightly zoomed in here. So I just zoomed out by 10% uh, to make it look a bit more alike. So I also see that these two bits of text are much closer together on the original page. So I'm going to remove the top margin here at bottom margin here, still too far apart for my taste. But basically this is down to how we set the margins. So, in this case, I might even make a minus margin to move them closer together. Next up, I want this text here. So again, I'm just going to go copy and select all paste. And this is also center aligned. 
And now, before we move on, one thing you can, you can clearly see is that this box here is much wider than this one. And that's also something we can change. This is what um, content containers are for. So I can use the inspect mode here. That's this little icon here, inspect mode. And this tells me, if I hover over here, tells me right here, 940 pixels is the width of this box. So the way I can replicate this is I get a content container, drop it on the page. I put the box, the content box inside the container. Then I select the container and I set the width to 940. Okay. There's another factor here though, which is that the text inside the box doesn't span the full width of the box. And we'll just do the same thing over again, right? Basically, whenever I see this, I know I need a content container. Something is like narrower than the full width, that's a content container. So I'll get another content container, drop it in here and place this text in here. I select this content container and oh, I need to find out Again, I go on inspect, hover over this, and this says 658.75. So let's say 660, right? So that would be 660 pixels in here. There we go. Now, what else do we need? We need a button. Let's have a quick look at this button. Some stuff I want to know here. We have the background color. I'm going to copy this button color. And what else do we have? Font size 22. Okay. Sounds good. So I'm going to place a button on the canvas right here. I'm going to make it center aligned. I'm going to choose, I think style one is the closest one. I'm going to make it a bit smaller. And I'm going to choose purple. It's not the right shade of purple. So let's go and background color, customize that like this. Font size was 22 pixels. The font itself, I'm going to go custom font, railway. Then the button text, what was the button text? It was learn more question mark. So that's in link settings. Here we go. Learn more question mark like this. Now, another thing I noticed is that this button here is wider, but less tall. And that is down to margin control. So maybe I go 12 and 12 and then 30 and 30 on the sides instead of 20 all around to make it a bit more like that. Now, another obvious thing is that my whole page here is much smaller than than this one, right? Especially if I get rid of this here, we have the whole screen filled and we want to replicate that. For this, we want to add some margins again. So I want to, I'm going to select the content container here and I'm going to add margins to the top, maybe something like 130 pixels, maybe something like 150 to the bottom. Oh, I might actually do more 200, uh, 200, something like that. So, and I basically play around with these settings until I feel like it looks about right. And there's some more stuff. So the spacing here, you know, isn't quite perfect yet. So I think this is too far down. I think this looks a bit better. This kind of thing, right? So I don't want to spend too much time in this video now, you know, adjusting all these tiny details. Uh, but I did want to show you how you can get something very close. So here we go. I'll save this page and then preview it. And then let's do a side by side comparison. This is our replicated page. This is the original. So I would say pretty close, right? Pretty close. So that was a look at how you can use the inspector. So that is just F12, whatever browser you're using, hit F12 to get the inspector view to find out things like what's the font that's being used here, what's the exact color that's being used here, and things like that. Now, the one thing that I can't customize on our page is this white border around the button. That's something we don't have an option for. And that's also something where I want you to be aware that these are the kind of things we pay attention to. So that's something that bugs me a bit. And we will, we are working on extending the customizability to allow you to do things like add a border to your button. Now, what I'd like to know from you is, first of all, how did you like this tutorial as a look at how exactly to replicate a landing page? And also, 
do you have some favorite landing pages or opt-in pages or home pages or sales pages that you look at that you go oh, i wish i could build one of these please link them leave a comment below tell us about them i'd love to take a look and maybe make some more videos like this to show you how to replicate those pages